And so our scripture reading from the gospel comes as we continue to read through Mark's narrative of Jesus' life and ministry. And we pick up the story almost exactly where we left it off last Sunday. Jesus and his followers are in Jerusalem, and it is now just days before Jesus will be executed. Last week, we pondered Jesus' conversation with a religious leader who was earnestly seeking Jesus' guidance and wisdom. And we thought about the grounding weight of Jesus' command to love God with our whole selves and to love our neighbors as ourselves. In today's reading, Jesus is wrapping up his teaching in the temple. And so I invite us all to listen carefully to this reading from Mark 12, verses 38 through 44, that we might hear God's word for us today. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes, and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces, and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearances say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then Jesus called his disciples and said to them, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. May God add understanding and wisdom to this reading of the Holy Word. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So in the midst of these unprecedented times, time moves forward and we are quickly approaching the end of the church season of Lent. As you all know, throughout Lent, we have been considering the burdensome weights that keep us from God's desires and the grounding weights, which serve as a firm foundation for seeking God's dreams for all. And today, Mark's gospel invites us to consider the weight of our inner connection. We are all part of one interconnected community, the family of God. That community is a gift. It is a gift that we ignore all too often and neglect at our own peril. And Jesus' rebuke of those engaging in self-aggrandizing generosity is a call to all of us to be more intentional about embracing the gift of community and caring for one another within community. So imagine with me the scene as Jesus is teaching in the temple. Jesus is finishing up his teaching, knowing that there are already many who are plotting his death. And still, he takes the time to offer one final critique one final critique of the religious authorities and the powerful elite of his day. Jesus is clear and to the point. Beware of those who go around looking for the praise and recognition of others, but behind the scenes are actually cheating widows, the most vulnerable people 
out of their homes. After the sharp rebuke, Jesus then turns his attention to an example of the very thing he is condemning, condemning happening in real time. He walks over and goes and sits across from the place where people would bring their offerings to support the work of the temple. Envision an offering collection box at the entrance of the church. Jesus sits and simply watches for a bit as the people put their offerings in the collection box. Many rich people bring lots of money, enough that it would be clear to any passerby that they are putting in quite a sum. And then Jesus watches as one poor widow comes and puts in two small copper coins worth a penny together. The widow's two small copper coins would have been only one sixty-fourth of a laborer's daily wage. Basically nothing. But when Jesus calls the disciples over to point out the situation to them, Jesus makes it clear that the widow gave far more than any of the rich people because she gave everything and they only gave from their spare change or discretionary income. In the end, it's not about the sum given. Instead, what matters to Jesus and what should matter to us is that we give as a way of embracing God's gift of community and caring for one another within community. All those rich folks giving out of their excess were certainly being generous and their funds could certainly be put to good use, but they weren't leaning into God's gift of community. Said they were keeping enough to hopefully ensure that they would not need support or help from others, or really they were keeping enough so that they could just uphold this misguided belief that they did not need the community to survive. Even more than that, Jesus' words of warning and rebuke show that at least some of them we're doing all this for the sake of appearances. We're at the very same time cheating and taking advantage of the most vulnerable in their community, the widows of their day. And then in contrast, there is a widow. The poor widow whom Jesus observes has given up all false pretenses. She comes to the temple knowing very viscerally, I am sure, that the only path to survival, to life, to restoration and resurrection is in God's gift of community. And so she takes all she has, meager and economically meaningless though it is, and she gives it to the community. In her gift, she is saying, okay, God, here I am. I know I cannot do this alone. I trust in you. I trust in your gift of community. I give all I have to that community and trust you will care for me through the community. It's heart-wrenching when you think about it. It shouldn't ever be that dire for someone, never. And yet, century after century after century, the widows keep coming. As widows, yes, but also as child laborers and refugees, as migrant workers and asylum seekers, as people living on the streets, as single parents working multiple jobs in hopes of keeping food on the table, and the list goes on. Century after century, we humans as a whole seem to prefer the belief that we can and should make it on our own. Generation after generation, we hold ourselves back from fully embracing the gift and responsibility of God's interconnected family. 
but I wonder. I wonder if this isn't a moment in which all of that could change. As COVID-19 continues to spread around the globe and we now find ourselves under a safer at home order for the next several weeks, suddenly, as never before, aware that we are deeply interconnected. We are acutely aware that our every internet action can be a matter of life and death. We are acutely aware that we are all in this together. And while that can feel frightening, especially to the parts of us that are trained to be independent and self-sufficient, what if we choose instead to use this time to fully shed the illusion that anyone can go it alone? What if we choose to use this time to fully embrace the gift and responsibility of being part of God's sacred human family? What if we take the best of humanity that we are seeing in these days, people working together creatively to feed and house and protect one another, people putting lives before profits, and people offering grace, laughter, and love to one another through any and all means possible. What if we take these things and we hold them fast and we say that these will be our norms of giving and living now and forevermore? These are examples of God's gift of community at its best. These are stories of humanity embracing that gift and taking seriously what it means to care for one another in community. If we can do it in the midst of pain, suffering, fear, and death, we can do it at all times. We can trust in these ways. We can lean into these ways in which God is present within us and among us. And so as we face the uncertainty and change which surely lies ahead as this crisis continues to unfold, my prayer for today is that the widow's example may be our guide. May we give and live, fully trusting that God will continue to be with us and care for us reaching out to us through the sacred gift of community now and always. May it be so for you, for me, and for all God's beloved internet, interconnected community. And let God, all God's people say, Amen.